abusu ya fuwa miti eche obibi yara. Akwa laanya me, ena mwensa haka nisesi ya yai. Mala ma akwa laanya mina wuti ni dino. Mina mwensa haka misesi ya ano. Mina mida pangsoba, spiritual and herbal center ano. Ya rie biya, eh unkono. Anase wwe chinya 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 abre. Bibiti se apatitis, bibiti se stroke. Stroke diye, eboni pa kura tuto form na wenti minka. Sakura na masha wu 3 days. Masu ya ye uba minjisika. Tiye miye, masu ya ye uba minjisika. Na minu uba kwa apam, unhu towa. Asidebi wa kwa na wedi yaba. Bemba diye, adie becheno. Esese wa yi ni sori jina honu mu street. Emi se ubi ati maase. Na sa adie na sori ya njine street diya. Na ye problem. Enu wani se uwa US o uwa UK. Uba biya uwa biya no. Uba fami nomba. Enu ne guwa siya. Nuna wedi ya fremi. Anase uba ba masu ya ye. Wutu ukwa yi, sa wukwa kwa pebi bidi ya bafiye. Wukwa ya krata sema, juma sema. Chira sa wuna uda kura na usunsum da ye basa, basa, basa. Anuwa ni sa ubefa pangsoba nomba no. Na wa afreme, ufreme insuwa wansabe kame. Mekansi subyo, uba masuye ya minjisika. Anuwa ni sa minu ube kwa pam, unhuto wa na wadi asida edi ya ba. Awuwa sem, awuwa sem. Uwe ube timanya sika wa ubotom. Ne mwamu awuwa ntino. Wambe ti iti usama u unu babi ya ubesi. Ude diebe ya ni se freme. Anase brema asu ya ye. Na ye ntira use. Ya di ahahain ene esa ya ria wa hanumu. E ye managing director. Anase managing editor of Insight Newspaper. Ura Kwesi Prat Jr. Ena ose. Ono wankasa anu uhuni se, enye mebi ee kwasu wo NPP ama nyukuwe ni mu. Ana se, bibi ee ha NPP ama nyukuwe no. E di inti ee na okasa, di inti okasa ee nina ene se, o se, ee ye former deputy minister of finance, and chairperson of finance committee of parliament, a ye freno ura kwe kukwa aten. O se, abaye no ee maniji gana ekonomi no, E se, Ponzin Scheme. O se, abayeno, o rane, gana ekonomen as a Ponzin Scheme. O se, o yue yeno, ena o sa se, e ye, former General Secretary, e de ma, NPP, ama nyukuno, e ye, yura, kwa bina, e jeyi, a Japon, en so so se, gana fo, en fanche, NPP, abayeno. And was ah, Bonnie Ben and Pippi are buying a ya and tea. Yen form Bonnie Fanche Wom. So why a Bonnie ya? And a do Bonnie Chawo. Now when your Bonnie dear Bonnie Ben, I am Fanche Moon. Aha, I will be full radio, most some for or be full quamage many. They be am catch em, sir. Aha, and I did tea, the air trend do social media, the air trend do a gana hano, the only tea and carpet, the only her and carpet, and the bremo. Enu ti abrevi ni abrevi ya ramka chama sa mo subscribe sa biya si njia new CP anasi uploadu video biya ba first persona onso onsa beka na ubenya biya ti anasi ubenya biya ya den ashe aha na di edi ti na edi ashe no ya di abremo enu ti mumi yangu ni yangu ti aya managing editor of Insight newspaper ura kwesi prati junior in Samoa oka edifa. Yura kwa kukwa aten ene kwa bina eji e Japan eho. Mimi mkuti imra. Something is happening in the new patriotic party. And it is something of extreme significance. Except that it appears that it is not being noticed and discussed. Here we have a former deputy minister of finance and chairperson of the Finance Committee of Parliament making the claim that the country's economy has been run like a Ponzi scheme. That's a significant statement. He is still a member of Parliament of the new patriotic party. But you see, he's not the only one. We have <clears throat> A former Deputy General Secretary, also of the New Patriotic Party, who only this week came up and said that the people of Ghana should forgive the government, the NPP government, 
Forgive the NPP government for what? And listen, listen to what he says. He said many things, but listen to what he says. I'm a very principled and candid person. To a certain extent, I also agree with Kweku Kwating on the issues he has raised. If you go in for a loan and dig a hole or invest it in a national cathedral project, it is not a profitable venture. We don't need to use taxpayers' money to build a national cathedral. And he claimed that he was one of the people in the party who opposed the project. And he also claims that because of this stand that he took, he was denied appointments. Something is happening in the new patriotic party. <clears throat> Today, as we speak in this studio, Kobina Japon, former general secretary of the party, is following Dr. Baumia around the country, urging people to vote for Dr. Baumia. But go back a few months ago, <clears throat> when he was involved in the contest for the presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party. He gave testimony about how democracy, internal party democracy, was completely destroyed. How leaders of the party, members of the party, were hunted because of what they thought, because of what they stood for. This is Kobna in Japan, who strangely today is campaigning for the very people he criticized has completely forgotten what he said only a few months ago. But he has given us an indication of what is happening in the new patriotic party. You understand? Now, listen to Dr. Nyaho Nyahota Makro, a founding member of the party, you are and what he says about the YouTube. party. Hot news all time. Now he you claims juicy that internal democracy in the Hot party has been completely time. destroyed. That the party has been hijacked by a small group of persons with loyalty not to principle but to an individual. It doesn't end there. Listen, the majority of members of parliament of the new patriotic party went public and told us that the economy was being mismanaged by the then finance minister and demanded that it should be removed from office. Something is happening in the new patriotic party. Everywhere you turn, listen to them. Look, I compare Kwo Kennedy in Japan. He said that members of the party were looting the national coffers as if there's no tomorrow and there's more. Now, if these people, prominent members of the party, are telling us that there's no internal democracy in the party, one, they are telling us hmm, that decisions about national governance and so on today are being made by a cabal. That is their claim. Now, how would you entrust the whole country to this so-called cabal, hmm, which is intent on national destruction. And I'm not the one saying it. I am not the one saying it. Why would you do that? So I think it is important for all of us to take note of what is happening within the New Patriotic Party. What people in the New Patriotic Party are telling us only a couple of weeks ago, just before the launch uh, of, 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 of the, the outdooring of the vice presidential candidate of the new patriotic party, Dr. Martin Opoku Prempe, something very significant happened. The newspapers published a photograph of the current flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Napo. And Wuntumi, Chama Wuntumi of Kumasi, and said that the flag bearer had resolved differences between them. But nobody told us what the differences were. What were the differences?
Was it about national policy? Was it personal? And how come that those differences were so important and crucial that they had to be resolved before the outdooring of Napoleon Kumasi? Something is happening in the new patriotic party. And all we have to do is to open our ears and listen well and do the proper analysis. Listen, Mr. Alan Martin, he was a cabinet minister, not an ordinary cabinet minister. Indeed, he was the minister of trade. He got so frustrated within the party that he had to break away to create a new platform to contest for the presidency of this country. Mm. What pushed Mr. Alan Chermatin out of the new patriotic party? What pushed him out? He's speaking today. We should be listening to what he says. He was Minister for Trade and Industries. One of the flagship projects of this government was being implemented under his provision. One district, one factory. What happened to the one district, one factory project? Was he frustrated in the implementation of that project? What happened? So, you see, it is important for us. Don't listen to NDC. Don't listen to CPP. Don't listen to anybody. Listen to the voices in the new patriotic party and do your correct analysis. And I cannot forget my very good friend, my very, very good friend, Mr. Albert Kandapa, when he spoke to the judiciary and made the point that if every time the judiciary scores in favor of the sitting government, there is a problem and there will be a problem. What did he see? Why did he make such a public statement? I think it is important for us to listen to these people in government. Listen to them in government and do your proper assessment. You see, what Mr. Kweku Kwatin says is a huge statement. He's talking about a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is essentially a 419 operation. And we have seen it here. You remember that just before the 2016 elections, hmm? there was a Ponzi scheme which broke out in this country. I think it was called DKM. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Now, Mr. Kuku Kwachi is saying that that is how the national economy is being run. There have been several Ponzi schemes based on deceit, based on this, uh, 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 tricks and so on. But ultimately, the objective of every Ponzi scheme is to steal and destroy. And that's how he describes how this country's economy is being run. I'm frightened. And I think everybody should be frightened. His words are deep. His words are deep. And we need to reflect on those words. Now, he, former Deputy Finance Minister, not an ordinary person, not the Minister for Works and Housing, not the Minister for Information. Deputy Finance Minister is telling us that all that is done is that we borrow large amounts of money. Hmm? We use part of the money we borrow, listen very carefully, to retard debts, the debts that we owe, and the rest we use it, huh? we spend it on projects <coughs> which are not viable, which would not enable us to repay our debt. Is this not the path to complete national disaster? Because if you borrow, eh, and you don't use what you have borrowed in order to stimulate production and productivity so that you can generate resources to repay your loan, but you use it simply to pay debts, you understand? simply to pay debt and to chop the rest on non-viable projects, that's the surest part to catastrophe, to disaster. And no wonder today Ghana is bankrupt. We are completely bankrupt. We are spending 
128% of total national revenue on debt servicing, debt repayment, and public sector emoluments. That's a complete disaster. And if we continue to head in this direction, petroleum prices will continue to increase, the price of bread will continue to increase, the price of cooking oil would increase, the price of gari would increase, the price of maize would increase. Life will become unbearable for our people. And this is the warning which is being sounded. We need to pay attention to this grave warning coming from no less a person than Mr. Kweku Kwating. It's also significant hmm, that this man, this honorable member of parliament, refused an appointment in the last cabinet reshuffle. What has he seen? Why is he distancing himself? Because no matter what he says, whether it was an internal memo, external memo, or whatever, what he says is witty and revealing. So I don't care whether he says it's an internal memo or not, he admits that he wrote what has been published. And what he has what has been published is extremely alarming. My brother, lawyer Apia Dankwa, started by making a very valid claim about how nations are developed and so on. And I'd like to emphasize the point that no nation in the world, no nation anywhere has been developed huh, by embarking on the path of capitalism. Never. Because essentially, capitalism depends on exploitation mm, of others in order to accumulate surpluses for its advancement. So, the Western nations we see today, Germany, Britain, France, the United States of America, and so on, mm, thrived in circumstances where they could exploit others to accumulate surpluses. The United States of America benefited essentially from classical slavery. You understand? When others were captured as beasts of burden and made to work for hundreds of years without pay. That is what led to the accumulation who became the basis of the prosperity of the United States of America. Germany profited essentially uh, from colonialism, where it captured other people's resources, mm, their land, their mineral wealth, and so on, and used it for its own benefit. France today continues to profit hugely from colonial and neo-colonial exploitation. You are if you look around uh, French-speaking African countries today, all of them, all of them without exception, are compelled to keep their foreign reserves in the central bank of France. So when France needs money to embark upon development projects and so on, it just takes money from French-speaking Africa for its development. It does not pay interest on it, nothing. When the African countries need resources for their development, they borrow their own money from France and pay interest on it. So it is this exploitation which enables France to somehow meet the needs and aspirations of its ruling elite and the middle class. Even with this level of exploitation, the working people of France, the exploited working class of France, is up in the streets on a constant basis protesting against their living conditions and so on. You take the case of Belgium. How did Belgium attain its current level of, of comfort and so on? You do know the story of King Leopold, who actually regarded the Congo as his private property. The Congo is one of the most resourced nations in the world. What doesn't the Congo have? Water resources, diamond, everything. You understand? And King Leopold regarded these resources as his private property. Indeed, at a time in history, Congolese nationals who were not able to provide enough rubber huh, for the pleasure of Belgium and its king had their limbs amputated 
if you were required to bring a certain quantity of, of rubber and you failed to do it, they cut one hand. Next time, they cut the other hand. This is how Belgium built its surpluses which enables it to enjoy a certain level of comfort today. And we can go on and on and on. The reality is that the options available to the capitalist states is not available to African countries like Ghana today. So we have to stop and think. When they come here, IMF, World Bank, and so on, and these Western leaders come and say we should follow the example, do they tell us which people in the world we can go and capture as slaves to work for us for hundreds of years without pay? That option is not available to us. And even if that option was available to us, it would be against our moral values and our ethos as a people. So that option is not available to us. The Ponzi scheme option is not our option. Today, when they say we should follow the West and adopt capitalism, they should be telling us which people we can also go and, 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 and colonize, steal their resources, steal their gold, steal their diamonds, steal their lithium, and so on, in order to facilitate our development. That option is not available to us. And because these options are not available to us, our leaders continue to deceive us, to give us hope where there's no hope, to continue with this Ponzi scheme that Kweku Kwati describes. And the Ponzi scheme would eventually crash. There is no Ponzi scheme which will last forever. It will crash. Borrow use part of the money to settle old debts, huh? use part of the money you have borrowed to engage in non-viable projects and so on, it will lead to a crash. So if you are not ready to stop and think, if you are not ready to examine the true options available to us, we will continue on this reckless part of neo-colonialist capitalist development and crash. Ghana has almost crashed now as we speak. If it continues into the future, God save us. A Magadon will visit us. A Magadon is what our destiny would be. Now, you see, what Kweku Kwati writes is something we should sit down seriously and reflect upon. And if we were to sit down seriously and reflect upon what he has written, it will lead us to major changes in our approach to development. Major changes. Look, it was in 1945, in Manchester, in the United Kingdom, that all the prominent leaders of Africa and Africans in the diaspora, the Pan-African movement met and examined our conditions and came to a number of conclusions. One of the conclusions they came to was that we needed to free ourselves from colonial exploitation. We needed to embark upon the National Liberation Project to break the links we had with Europe and so on. One. Two, they came to the conclusion that we needed to own our resources and to exploit these resources for our own benefit. And they came to the conclusion that we needed to unite Africa under the banner of scientific socialism. There is no better option than this option which was determined in Manchester. And indeed, if you look back to 1957 to 1966, you can see the tremendous <coughs> progress that this country made when it followed that path to development. And since we abandoned that path to development, you can see the crisis upon crisis that we continue to suffer. The African people, the Ghanaian people, have no option to the Nkrumah's program for national development, for the acceleration of the national development process, and we need to return to that.